it takes two to tango. Or if you listen to today's readings, it takes three to tango. You see, no marriage relationship can survive if only one party cares and is involved in keeping that marriage alive. It takes two people to be involved, to care, to nurture that relationship. One cannot be married to herself. One needs someone else to complement me in order to create something bigger, something different. The same can be said about the church. It takes at least two or three to tango to be a church. One cannot be a church on his own. One cannot say, I am all I need to be with God and to be Christian. It takes two, at least two, to tango the Christian church. This last two weeks, I have been wearing many hats. I am a priest and a pastor foremost, but I have also been dabbling with yard work, I've been doing some mowing, weeding, designing the bulletin, updating our website, working on the camera settings, and I have to say, it can be exhausting to do multiple things on my own. One can do it for a period of time, but eventually it takes more to tango. And so I'm looking forward to a day when there'll be more people here walking back again. In the first reading today, Philip, one of the first original seven deacons, was proclaiming the good news in Samaria. He was successful. He baptized many people. And yet something was missing because one sentence later, the Acts of the Apostles say that the Apostles decided to send Peter and John to accompany Philip and to bring his work to fulfillment. When Peter and John came to Samaria, they prayed, and having baptized, the people that first heard the message from Philip, after Peter and John came, they also received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And thus, the church in Samaria was born. Not only by Philip's action alone, but also with the assistance of Peter and John. It takes three to tango. In the Gospel, Jesus, right before his departure, says, I will not leave you alone. And then there was a sentence that is truly mind-boggling because John in the Gospel says, you will realize because I live and you will live and you in me and I in you. And the Father will send you another paraclete. Isn't this amazing? He lives in us, we live in him, 
and there is more coming. You see, even God takes three to ten go. Even when God, in God's infinite wisdom, decided to enter this earth that God has created, God has decided to, blink, to bring the work of salvation to completion, not by one person, but by three persons of the Holy Trinity. God the Father sent God the Son to show us what life is all about, to show us how to live and how to die. But then God the Son is departing us, which we will celebrate next Sunday on the Solemnity of the Ascension. And right before leaving, God the Son says, God the Spirit will come to continue and complete the work that I have begun. The God in which we believe is not a singular individual entity. The God in which in whom we believe is a tango of three divine persons dancing, loving, creating, and saving us together. Today, as we continue our very surreal lives with this global health crisis, I want to remind you all that you are not being church by yourself on your own. Even though you might be physically distant from us here inside this beautiful church, you are not dancing alone. You are not being church alone. You may feel removed, you may feel isolated, but believe me when I say that you are not doing this on your own. For I am in you and you are in me, says today's Gospel. And moreover, we have a new advocate, the Spirit that is with us. And moreover, we have each other to work together in the vineyard of the Lord. Yes, perhaps we are physically isolating at this point, but we are not dancing the dance of faith alone. For to be Christian, to be the follower of Christ, it takes three to tango. Amen.